Okay. Hey, we're here this afternoon, bank holiday weekend with Ranty. Hello, Ranty. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, I'm never, um, just to let everybody know that me and Ranty, this is our first real meeting. And um, yeah, we've never had a hangout before, even though we're truthers. <laughs> Well, that's kind of true. I mean, I remember years ago when uh, you were doing the Southern Moon Group back then, and you used to do your streams of an evening, and you'd have 70 or 80, sometimes 100 people watching, you know, and you had a, a panel full of, you know, half a dozen people at certain times. And uh, I was always, always on the outside looking in. Um, and I think at the time, there was a few people that I knew that used to come in, etc. And yeah, I mean, yeah. So that's that's the, about it, really. Yeah, I remember that's... you coming in. We've had the odd message to each other but then they took my channel last year they took that channel it was nearly ten thousand, and they took it but um sun and moon still goes i usually put just hangouts on there now um but that's what goes on there but i have another channel the unscrambled channel where i have a voice <laughs> so i took a lot more on there and you know it took me to this case and that case is relevant in today but yeah I just i started breaking down the footage and looking at things and we're just run by a bunch of cartoons as far as i can see none of it's really no well i mean what do you think's going on in the world right now you know i mean what's the what's the script what what's your view of all this that's going on i mean were you prepared for this lockdown and, and stuff well do you know something we've been talking about this for a long time no matter who it is whether you're with the bigger channel or the smaller people it doesn't matter we were all talking about it and we've got here and nobody knows what to do <laughs> Um, well, I myself have been a rebel and have been up to London a few times, you know, I haven't kept to it. But when you're a truther, you stay at home a lot more. We're on our computers, we're making videos, we're having hangouts. So we're home a lot more anyway. And to be honest, I'm not being horrible, but out there, the globe world, I don't really like it. You know, there's lots of angry, narcissistic people. So I stay at home a lot more. So this lockdown wasn't as bad for me, but it's just the fact that you're not allowed to go out. Those words put on top changed it for me. But I try and put out as much truth as possible, even if, you know, like the other day, a really good channel put out a video with a minister. But what it is is someone said, that's fake. He's a deep, deep fake. That minister, the, 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 the rancher, sorry, was a, was, a, was a deep fake. And they were saying, why are you putting this on your channel? But that's the point. We want the truth. We're fed up of the lies. So the channel's a good channel. She picked a video where they're telling us all this information and it could have been deep fake video. But it's good just to get the information out there. That's what I think. People can make their own minds up. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a big thing going around, isn't it, about what Alex Jones is up to. You know, I mean, a lot of people think that 90% of what he says is, is bang on, but 10% isn't, you know, 10% is holding everything back. So, yeah. Don't they say thing. that about um, David Icke as well, really? The same thing. Yeah. But then again, is it just a conspiracy that they're saying that this is a conspiracy? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, when you start when you start looking into that and saying that, oh well, who are the people telling you that David Dyke and uh, Alex Jones uh, are withholding ten percent of the information? You know, so are they the uh, the psyop inside of the psyop? You know, I mean, you could go down this rabbit hole. But we do know be. that in our truth community, community, there are probably people working for the government and we don't know, you know, and you won't know who they are and you'll think they're truthers. Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose that's true. I mean, you've got to look at who, you know, where the trajectory of the person has come from. You know, did they start off with a small channel and go very big very quickly? You know, who are they linked to? All that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that are taking cautious, a slow road. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, you've got a good reputation, Ranty. You have. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm glad of that. I've worked hard to uh, to get the channel to where it is. It's taken a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and and being truthful the whole way. You know, I've never tried to lie about anything. I've never lied about anything. I've just gone ahead and just done my own stream, my own. Uh, I've taken the flack because I've gone out and I've showed apparent um curvature or apparent boats going over the horizon whichever way you choose to take it uh but i did that because i knew that this is reality this is what we need to look into you know you can't just show the goods you know even though i can go out and i can see 20 miles shore to shore well what's the point in, of that if you don't understand the other days when you go and well, you one see thing that things hidden you know learned is that even if you didn't know it before, it makes you learn the globe system so that you can have to say it back because these people are going to ask questions. So you know more about the globe. 
finished it before. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I think I think from uh, the research that I've done and and how I've gone about actually doing it is that it's forced me to not just sit back and say I have an observation of twenty mile and then just sit there and and, and live off it for the rest of my life. I can, you know, I've shown the good, the bad, the ugly, and it's forced me to understand so much about. Um, uh, observations over water, all the different things that go into that, the shoaling effect, the swell, all this It's a matrix, isn't it? Just even the one subject, because it's layer upon layer and you've got to basically become a professional. The, the, the truthers are becoming the scientists. We're the one, you know, it's, yep. it's what's happening. Yep, and that, that's it. And that's, you've hit it spot on the head there. I mean, everything from understanding the inferior mirage, which used to be what the Globers would call where the, the curvature of the Earth used to start, you know I mean? That's been taken. Yeah, away. I, I talked to someone. Do you know him? He's wide awake. Yes. Yeah. I love wide awake. Yeah, I mean, there's a few few truthers that are looking into these kind of uh, phenomena that that actually happen. And the globers, it's just for them, it's just one thing, and that's just Earth curve. Everything is just Earth curve. But as truthers, we like to understand nature and how these things work. The topography of the land underneath the water has an effect on the water. When they try to put us in a side-on view and they say, if you've got a flat Earth. Is it really, or is that the case? You know, do you get this shoaling effect that happens over water? Is water actually It's a strange flat? thing we live in, though, isn't it? Because under the water is concave, uh, the sky is convex, and we're not. <laughs> so it's all a bit, it's all a bit, um, yeah, it's quite a lot to understand. And I just don't think enough research is being done. I know you are, but I'm just saying generally enough research is being done on the place we live. We're sort of stuck. Yeah, right well, I think there's I think there's a lot of people that like to listen to people that do the research. Uh, I don't think there's enough people actually going out and doing the research or dedicating themselves to one particular topic. Me, myself, I've stuck on one topic and I've never deviated on that for five years. So it's quite evident that if I had gone in a different direction and been a jack of all trades and a master of none you know i might have had a little bit of knowledge of this and a little bit of knowledge of that but we still wouldn't have any answers you know what i've been able to do with this channel is get real answers real uh truth out do you there. want to say do you want to say your channel uh yeah it's just ranty at the minute r-a-n-t-y uh that's dead easy to find but if you actually type in ranty follow it up with flat earth you'll still find the channel there because my original name was ranty flat earth i removed the flat earth from it uh, around about what about two months ago uh, it was just easier for me to because i'm doing my shows now when people are trying to type messages to me because the stream's rampant you know i'm getting a couple of hundred people in there and it's lit up uh, i can't everybody's typing just people were just typing ranty so did you, I, it wasn't... That when they, did you find that when they changed the algorithm last year, I mean, you know, my unscrambled channel was starting to, the videos were becoming viral, you know, I was getting like 100,000 views. And then because I was going against the narrative, suddenly when those algorithms came in last year, they flatlined the channel, basically. It flatlined. Yeah. And, um, you know that channel is a monetized one so you get to see a lot more of the logistics of everything you know i don't you know I'm, you probably can on the other one but i was watching it you know they just flatlined me but i've carried on because the truth more is the most important thing of course, of course it is yeah i mean but you know if you you know if you but even, that, even one of these videos it was it i saw it say one hundred and thirty-one thousand. it now says 106 so they keep taking the views off and that that post is probably at two hundred or maybe three hundred thousand, really. Yeah, they like to mess around with stuff like that. They like to try and uh, you know remove your views on it so it doesn't look as popular. They will uh, take the likes and the dislikes and they'll mess around with them. Um, you know, and it's also finding it. And they send bots in now. You know, like this guy kept coming in and he'd always put even if it's a woman that was good dude and then people started writing comments he's a, he's a bot and that's youtube probably and, and even when you delete him he comes back yeah there's a lot of people out there with a lot of different sock accounts so you know i mean i've had it myself i mean you know impersonations of yourself or anything like that but there's so many people out there with hundreds of uh, you know bot account kind of you know what happens to me ranty i know i know that you might be very different but you know, I treat people with respect. I talk to a lot of people. Um, but if you're rude, you're deleted. That's it. I'm zero tolerance for bad behaviour. We don't need it. We should 
you know, we should be awake. We know what respect's all about. That's what I think. And if these people are rude or they start insulting me, they get blocked. I don't even talk to them. So I don't yeah. get a problem on the channel now, Unscrambled. And Sun and Moon, most people are what they are, so they come in on that one. But I, I can't, I don't take bad behaviour myself. Yeah, I mean, I used to be that way, and then I was the other way, and then I was the other way, and then I was, I've, you know, you've got to try and sort of like get a happy medium. So I have a very small moderation group now because what had happened is there was a rogue moderator in the uh, it, that I'd given the moderation to, uh, and they had, had, you know, behind my back, they'd, they'd literally gone ahead and blocked over 700 of my subscribers. Yeah, um, I, I sometimes wonder when you, I, I try and do the same thing. I just, I just, mod, um, most people are moderators. You yeah. know, when they come on and they stay in the chat room for a few hours or a few times, I think, right, OK, then no problem. So I bet them as moderators. So on my channels, most people are moderators. Well, here's the other thing. So because I can, I do want to hear the voice of the opposition and I'm happy for them to disagree with it in chat. But if they're a moderator, they can say all the swear words in the world. But if they're not moderated, then they are literally held back from what they can say. So the chat is cleaner with them not being all moderated. But I do understand what you mean. In the past, I'd had someone that was doing the same thing. They were progressing how wonderful and a great mod they were. But other people could see that they were deleting their, 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 their chat rooms. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, that, you know, I've, I've, I've had to rearrange everything about a week and a half ago. So I'm not going to, you know, you, you just got to, you got to know who you can trust. And I'm keeping a very close eye on that. And you know, if it works for you, having everyone a moderator. Yeah, it's not, it's not good though, is it? You know, it's, we, we like to say we're the truth community and look what we've got yeah. to go through. But then again, like you say, I mean, if, if somebody doesn't, if somebody disagrees with somebody else, a lot of people can be trigger happy, you know, oh, well, I'll just ban them. I don't mind people know. disagreeing, but you know, if you're going to insult me on my channel, I'm not very happy about that. You know, I just think that we live, you know, if we know the truth, we wouldn't talk to, excuse me, my dog, Floss, shut up. My well, daughter's I've... just come back. The dog wants to go and see, don't you, Floss? You always want to be involved in everything, don't you? My, sorry, my dog's the size of a rabbit, but the, has the personality of a Great Dane. <laughs> All right. She doesn't well, realise she's that small. Um, well, here's yeah, what I, I just, found. Here's I just what... like everybody getting on. You know, I put loads of hearts all over everything on my channel. I, I, my whole point is that we get on. Yeah. Well, here's what I found, that the, the trolls wear themselves out. So if you... <laughs> if you have a troll in there that calls you a name and wants to go after you, they're not going to spend the entire three or four hour live stream constantly calling me out. And me they're going to get tired eventually and then they just crack on and start talking to other people and then they forget about it and they move on. I, to me, it's more of a water off a duck's back because I'm hosting a, a show. I'm, I'm trying to actually move this um, forward and try and get to the nitty gritty of every individual subject, I mean, Coriolis or whatever, get the best of the best arguing against that, the best from the globe against the best from the flat. But not even that uh, one's um, a load of rubbish, isn't it? The, Cololi the Corolla, I can't say it. Coriolis. Now, it? That, that, that's it, Coriolis effect was only made for the globe. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have a globe, it doesn't work. Exactly, it doesn't work anyway. Nobody sees it. Nobody actually, you know, th th there's no way of actually verifying it. You don't see a plane flying towards you and then suddenly you're very enough from underneath of it, you know, moving underneath the plane. That just doesn't happen. The whole know? point of that is that to get to Australia, it would be having to slowly go round, you know, like do a, do a round, go round and round and flip round. You never ever see anything like that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but they're going to come around and say, well, the atmosphere is attached to the Earth. Well, if the atmosphere is attached to the Earth, then well, where's the Coriolis? It'd be like going on a roller coaster ride. It'd be, going, it'd be, like, it'd be like going on the Star Trek vision, a journey. Yeah. Whoosh! Yeah, it's almost in lockstep with the Earth, they'll say, you know, and it just floats along with it. Oh, yeah, of course it does. Yeah, yeah, because gravity just pulls it all like nobody. Yeah, it's just total nonsense. We all know yeah. that. But we've been very programmed and you know even me you know sometimes i know that i probably shouldn't have the sugar you start knowing all these things but i can't i can't change everything overnight but as long as your consciousness changes yeah. you know i think that's the main thing really well the best way to handle it is to turn it back on them you see they for years have said oh we've got all the scientific proof you know we can we can prove this you know when you actually hold the toast to the fire and you ask for this scientific proof you know, formulated by a, a scientific method. So do you find, Renty, the more you wake up, right? So say you've got a scientist or some 
something. Say 20 years ago, you'd have been listening to them when you'd have been going, wow. And now when you listen to them, they don't say anything. They just talk gobbledygoo. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you watch that Bill Nye video of the parrot of the boat going over the curvature, you know, how that that little model, nobody ever sees that in reality. That just doesn't happen. You know, nobody sees a boat go over the curve, right? But they'll tell you that that's what you should see. But you never see that, ever. Never, ever see that. Do you know the you know, annoying if... thing with it is, though, is that we have this 360 eyesight. That doesn't help, does it? Our own eyesight is the one thing that's blocking us because everything is flat <laughs> with mountains and things in it or hills or whatever it is, valleys, seas. But uh, our eyesight fools us. <laughs> Our own yeah, eyesight. Exactly. And we've got a limit to how far we can see. We've got a limit to the resolution that the eyeball can see. And every camera in the world will have a limit to how far it can see and what resolution it can pick up. Even the best camera in the world, if you're at sea level, may only be able to see as far as, let's say, 60 miles. Let's just say that as a, as a, as a broad scale. You know, and after that, then everything starts to fall into one pixel. You could have a whole house that would fit into one pixel and you could have a tree next to it that would also be in the same pixel so how can you differentiate what's the tree and what's the house you know so every all that information gets lost so eventually things start to disappear from the bottom up you know it's as simple as that you know the, the, yeah you, you haven't got bionic eyes and you can't see forever Did you know something ranty i went to what's called silbury hill like and silbury hill is a pyramid but what it was is we'd actually parked the car in the car park, walked to the fence, gone in the field, walked around the pyramid, come back, and we were standing at the car, and then none of us could believe that this pyramid was about five, ten times the size. It was this huge, you know, like we were about quarter of a mile away from it, and it was now, I'd just say, ten times bigger than it was than we were standing at the fence. So this illusion that happens, it happens on land as well as in the sea. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does. You know, anybody that says that, you know, you can just go out and see a boat go over the curve or whatever, that's the only thing the globe ever say. And that's just totally incorrect. I mean, there's so much. And, you know, I've learned that that mirroring effect is going to stop us knowing the truth because it just blocks out everything and the sun goes down in, well, disappears in that mirroring. Yeah, I mean, if we gave a, let's say, a degree, I mean, I, I wouldn't know for sure because I've not actually got to, to the calculations of this, but let's say it's one degree. Let's say at one degree, uh, anything that falls within that one degree uh, off, off 90 degree um, parallel uh, is going to fall into an area that's susceptible to getting this inferior mirage. Uh, now, every time I've gone out and done observations, I would say, well, I say every time, probably 98% of the times that I've gone out and done observations, when I'm looking at the furthest thing that I can see, it always falls into an inferior mirage. Um, and it was understanding what the inferior mirage was, and that wasn't Earth curve, that was an atmospheric blockage behind which you would have seen it had it not been for the inferior mirage. So the bottom of the object. Yeah, this is what wide awake is trying to tell everybody. But he, you know, you get to that mirroring effect, which is wherever it is in front of you, it just blanks out everything. Yeah, and he's absolutely spot on with that. Absolutely spot on. 100% true. Everything is hidden behind that inferior mirage. That inferior mirage is the blockage. And you'll see that with the uh, the sunset. And also, you get this Fresno lens effect on the sun. So, I mean, I've got a couple of observations that for sure show the, the real sun as a very, very small, bright uh, dot at the top of a very big bulbous um, Fresno lens effect of the apparent sun, right? So the real sun is just going further away. Um, and obviously, the light of that... You know, is this we'll to do with other dimensions as well? Because if you if you realise the sun is in another dimension, then we're not going to see it quite like it really is. Oh, I don't know about that, to be fair. <laughs> you know, I'm very practical, and I just like to think that, you know, until it's proven otherwise, that the, right. sun, the sun may well be a real object. It's quite possible that it's... But it's without actually saying that I've ever done any research on it, you know, Do you see Dave Marsh's one? Say. I mean, why do it's got that as well? No. When the sun is actually disappearing, it goes poof and it goes green. Poof, <laughs> oh green yeah, the thing. green, the green smoke. Yeah, I mean, that's again. You know, I mean, if I dedicated five years to to understanding what the sun does, maybe I'd have the answers for that. But to be fair, you know, I've, I've not really looked into it. But this is what I would like 
for people to do. What, what, what's your take on the subject, fact that Just pick one subject it. and stick on it, you know? If one person picks one subject and dedicates their entire channel or, you know, uh, research knowledge to that one subject, then you can get a lot of answers. But if, you, if you're bouncing around all the time, you know, you're going to lose track of this, you're going to forget about that, and you're never really going to get down to the nitty gritty. So, there's, you know, if there's people out there that are researching the sun, you know, just research the sun and just stick to that and let other yeah. people do their I, that, research. Yeah, that, and then that, if you if you go to my channel, you'll realise that someone like Robert Forsh is into the sun, really. He does yeah. a little bit of moon, he's into the sun. You've got Wide Awake is into, well, he's into a lot of things, but he likes the mirroring and he likes the sun. You know, you've got people who are into certain things. Dave Marsh is into the moon. Mm -hmm. So it's great to have that cross section on the channel. But I was just asking you, if I talk to Wide Awake, he will say that the sun isn't in the clouds, but we take pictures of the sun in the cloud. What's your take on that? Yeah, I don't think the sun is in the clouds. I think it's just a, an optical effect, <laughs> to be fair. Um, I've, seen a, I've seen a couple myself where it looks like the sun is going into the clouds. Um, but as I say, I think it's more of an optical effect. I think you have, um, it's, it's really, it's, you've sort of stumped me on that, to be fair, you know, by bringing that up. But I know that I've looked into it at some point in the past and was able to think, hmm, I think that's the cloud behind, you know, one set of clouds behind the sun. How far away do you think the sun is then? Just just asking. I'm not I trying no to. Idea. Um... I don't have a model. I don't have a model. It's not something that I've. Again, I, I, I sound very lax here when I say this, but I just don't, I, I don't know, you know, I really don't know. I just, the only thing I do know is where my feet are and everything that I can see, I can see flatness. So, and it doesn't match their model that says, because they have a model. So I can, I can get my observations and say, this does not match your model. And they will turn around to me and say, well, yeah, that's being refracted around the curvature of the earth. It's being loomed up. And that's why you're able to see it. And then when I ask them to demonstrate that or pr provide a practical experiment where they do the same thing over water, nobody can provide that. So as far as I'm concerned, my observations stand. I can see that and they can't prove what they're telling me that this is a loomed up uh, object. They can't prove that. Right. I can see what I can see. You can see what you can see. We all know we can see too far. And then they want us to look up and say, you know, well, the moon or the stars or the sun you know that can tell you what you what your feet are on <laughs> you know it's absurd you know it really is look up to know where your feet are doesn't make yeah because you know this whole thing that we're in it's not just about what we're living on it's what we're living in this whole global system is just all wrong all of it not just for what we're living on it's everything yeah i mean it looks like we're going into this matrix time kind of uh, thing there's a a series called Black Mirror. I don't know if you've ever watched that, uh, but wow, what a, what an eye opener it was! I think it first was came out around about five years ago, and then all the different things that they've put into this. If you're awake, you'll watch it awake, and you'll be like, "Wow, I can understand this, 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 and this," and all everything makes sense. If you're asleep and you watch it, you think, "Wow, what a wonderful sci-fi thing that was!" <laughs> yeah, but then. As we we're awake, we can see these things being implemented, literally implemented. And then yeah, because we're we're now in this, you know, this this video I was telling you about Tucker Tucker Carlson, who's off Fox News, who kind of looks like he's he's in our in our favour. You know, he's also saying that YouTube have taken posts down. The one with these two doctors talking, you're not allowed to say anything. You know, you're not allowed to discuss anything anymore. So you have to get it out in the best way you can. Yeah, but this coronavirus, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I mean, there's been a lot of uh, back and forth with that on my channel. As you know, I mean, I've put a lot of uh, community posts out and discussed it on many different videos with this coronavirus thing. Um, and I think regardless of whether you think that the, um, the coronavirus is a real thing or not, you know, whether it's actually killing people or not, the actual effects of what's what they're saying in regards to this is very true. It's very real. You know, I mean, the fact well, that we're in a lockdown. They surrendered overnight, basically. They did, yeah. We're prisoners in our own homes. We're on martial law, basically. Yeah. And we surrendered overnight. And we I, didn't even. I was telling yeah. people that this was coming. I was saying to them, this is very real. You know, we are going to be in lockdown. We are going to be kept in our houses. We are going to, you know, uh, the, the supply lines are going to start uh, failing. 
you know, all this kind of thing. I talked about the stock markets, how they were going to be crashing, everything pre what actually happened because I was able to 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 do the research and see what how they were actually. I was I actually put it on my about. channel in about January when they were first mentioned. I said to everybody, is this real or not? You know, I put it out as a question. Yeah. I knew something was going to happen. Well, real or not, the lockdown is real and the effects of that are real. And there's a lot of people in America that have lost their jobs. A huge, huge amount I of have. people in America. I lost yeah. my jobs. Yeah. But the thing is, I still went yeah. out. There was nobody there. There was nobody on the trains. There's no one at the stations. Here in Blackpool, it seems to be fair. It does. It looks like there's... It seems like it's going back to normal. I think there's a lot more... Traffic yeah, the last the couple of days, there's a lot more traffic yeah. on the road. You know, people are reporting, people are going out, because when you get to the tube station, it told you when it ends. It ends tomorrow, supposedly. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But, yeah, I, I think don't this think is going to be a couple what they of years. Wanted us to do. The, what, the biggest thing I find most shocking is that, we'll say three, four months ago, you had to wait four, six hours in casualty to see a doctor, and now you can walk straight in. I don't think, even though they told us to stay home, they were hoping that we'd still be going to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, and people literally stopped going in. All the hypochondriacs that were going in for a little... Yeah, that's, what I, that's exactly it, finger. hypochondriacs. Yeah, the hypochondriacs that would have been going and filling up the, you know, the A&E, they're not there anymore, and they're not going out to get injured anyway, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but a lot of these people were going in, they go, oh, I've got a cold for a few hours, I need an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree. They expected the hospital to be... Or we're going to the hospital for very minor things. You know, the hospitals were set up for... I know that they're there for for everything, but surely some of this stuff we could have done ourselves. No, as hypochondriacs, we were going there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't been to hospital for 20 years. Well, there's nobody there. Yeah, no. I've no. been to a few myself. They're empty here too. In fact, they're only admitting corona people with coronavirus. So... <laughs> You know, what mm. can I say? What did you, what did you make of yesterday then, the, the London Eye? I haven't, um, to be honest, I've been, I've not seen it, so maybe you can tell me what's happened there. Well, a group of people went, I think they were funnelled a bit, and some of them were arrested, and there's about five policemen on every person. It's not very nice, really, those they arrested. Right, okay, so a bit of... All uh... I can see in the videos is the police aren't handling this at all. A bit heavy-handed by the police, then, yeah. Yeah, you know that they 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 look in fear and they're argu they're they're angry, and you know like they're oh they're like ogres. But they, it should have been the police that were doing it. I don't think. Well, it's the powers that they've been given. You know, I mean, if you join the police force, you're of a certain mindset anyway. You know that you want to have power over people. You know that's the type of person you are. You want to do obviously you want to do right from wrong and you want to bring people to justice and things but you have a, a very high moral or a, what would appear to be a, a moral compass and when you're given these more powers i think you know a lot of people that it goes to their heads so they've been given these powers of what they can detain people for and uh, and this that and the other and you must stay in your house and they get you know well, i myself haven't seen any of that i didn't go to the thing yesterday but on the trains even though that even though in the station and on the bt tower it says stay home save lives help the nhs you know you hear it and see it you know i just sort of put my head down and just put my little suit case let's go well, <laughs> let's go through it get out of the station there's nobody there did he van that's d-i-d-i-v-a-n H Diddy Van. She's uh, she's got a YouTube channel anyway. She's been putting videos out about the uh, the overreactions of the police, etc., and what's going on in. The yeah, UK. I've been doing the same yeah. in America and England because you know because I got into this case last year. You know, when I look on my statistics, I'd say two thirds of the watchers are actually American, and um, you know, in our world, America runs everything. But you know what? Talking to them. They think we run everything. They believe we are running it. And we believe they're running it. <laughs> well, we clearly, nobody's running it except for the elites. You know, that's, that's who's really running this. Um, Businesses, because Trump and the rest are just actors. Yeah, I mean, this is a reset. Let's be honest. What's going yes. on right now is an absolute reset. We, do you know, they're not talking about the depression we're going to be in and we're going to be in the same cars in 10 years' time that we've got now. You know, we've lived in this affluent thing and they've made slaves to debt and then yep. they've chopped our legs off with the debt into a depression. Yep. 
I feel um, like we're being taken over. Well, we are. You know, everything's going to go digital. I mean, they're even talking about kids from school or kids in the future uh, actually being taught from home. So they would log on to the computer and log into class from home. And what is all school. this? Why do they want to keep the children at home? Yeah, but I mean, I, think, I mean, somebody was saying, uh, Cece, he sits in his car and he travels around. He's an American. I, I put his videos on Unscrambled and I have hangouts with him. But he's reckoning that he reckoned the other day on a video that they're frightened of the young generation because obviously they changed the algorithms. So we were lucky to wake up and see people and we could see all the hoaxes and all that kind of stuff. But um, then YouTube's changed everything. So the younger generation can't find it that easy unless they know somebody or find a video or a channel. So the younger ones aren't just going to easily find it. Probably who's woken up has woken up now because they won't be able to find it to wake up. Well, it's going to be if they want people to just get their information from the internet, then it can be controlled what information they're, you know, that they're susceptible. I do to find it a bit to, worrying you know. that Google have taken over YouTube now, and Google are the globe. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it's going to happen on YouTube. They're going to censor us there. They censor Facebook. us anyway. But it'll be worse. It'll be even worse when they start schooling from home and stuff like this, because the kids will only be able to find the information they're told it well and it's the not the socializing it's the not socializing yeah, that's, that's, the yeah. children you know i mean you think about it when you go to school that's where you meet your friends for life that's where you actually get to know how it is to speak to other kids and to interact with them and you're happy they're really stress. trying to make a very separate society aren't yeah. they right now i think separate. But you put a kid. and you know like my own kids oh no this, they know something's wrong but oh no we're, we're in lockdown and that's the way it's going to be. And I'm thinking, I've given birth to you. What That's what of, I said to my son last week. Of, what sort of kid are you going to raise that hasn't socialised yeah. with the children? If they only ever get taught from home or they have to log in from home to socialise online. I mean, how are they going to interact in reality with these people? You know, they'll be totally non-functional. They won't know what it's how to behave around another child of their age. You know? I mean, they've already made a very narcissistic, egotistical society as it is, because ultimately we cannot take any of this stuff with us. The most important thing is our consciousness, and that isn't materialistic. Oh, no, this is uh, what we've got here is a skin suit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, That's that, you know. but it is hard once you get, you know, it's not like I have a little house, but do I want to, you know, it's my little house. Yeah, but like I say, your body dies, but your mind goes on, so... You've but to... you know what? I've been quite abused in my life at one point, and actually, your sanity is worth more than a material thing. Oh, so I already know that material things are not it; they're things that you have. And money should have been just been the medium, but now the money is the god. Yeah, I mean, well, look, get it, get this. Yeah, when I when I attended high school for the first time, so it, you know, I came from a very poor family, a very poor council estate. I mean, the very first day that I started high school, I'd had to buy my school uniform from the second hand uh, hand me downs the week before the school opened. So they had an open day at the school where the kids from the year above had donated their clothing, and I had to go and get my school uniform from that that had cigarette burns in and all sorts. I couldn't afford a bag. You I don't have... have that anymore. No. Nope. But anyway, carry on. So my school bag was a carrier bag, right? Where everybody else had a brand new satchel or a brand new bag. Um, all brand new clothing, brand new shoes and everything. Everything that I had was second hand and had cigarette burns in. That's how poor I was when I grew up. And to be fair, you know, I mean, it was a horrible time because I was picked on and bullied for that. But oh, do you know what? I'm sorry. Well, it's the truth. And uh, yeah, but it made me stronger. You know, it made me the person I am now because it realised that at the end of the day, you don't have to have money or materials to actually be a good person. And I always... I've got still friends from school, you know, that's, that I'm still friends with. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. It makes you stronger. If you have these things, you know, you don't appreciate them. I appreciate everything I get now. You know, every single thing that I get, everything that I work for. But to be fair, I still have those kind of notions of, you know, being very careful with what I spend money on. It's like I haven't bought any new clothes for three years. Get that seriously. No word of a lie. <laughs> three years. I just work. And I work and I just look after my family. I look after my son. Have you managed to work in this lockdown or are you not working at the moment? Well, I've uh, I've been able to do uh, a little bit of work very recently because a job came in where there was nobody actually living at the address. So because there was nobody living there, I wasn't a threat to them. So being self-employed and you can, if you can go and go to your job and you're not actually, uh, 
you know in a position where you sort of like potentially could give them the virus then you can go and do it so i was able to do that so that's the only that's bit of work yeah but yeah i mean like i say you know i've got my mum uh that i support you know and her carers you know the, the money for looking after a carer so that's costing me an arm and a leg you know just to find the additional funds to look after her because she has motor neuron disease you see oh, so she sorry. needs well, she needs 24-hour care so then and i've got to look after my son uh, my I think everybody just woke up and realised that we've all got problems and issues. Yeah, and I don't, I don't honestly, it doesn't bother me as long as long as I've got some food on the table and uh, you know a paintbrush to go to work. That was really I'm weird the other day. I know you won't mind, Randy. I was talking to you and you said, "Well, I've got to go now because I'm dyeing my girlfriend's hair." Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lockdown barber. You know, I'm a lockdown barber. But hey ho. <laughs> you know, yeah, you've changed. You've changed profession. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I did, it's like a little mini paintbrush in it that you just get the roots and stuff. But the roots have grown grown quite long. They were about bloody three inches long. Hey, so, you would dye my hair, would you? My daughter. We, my bathroom gets dye all over it when my daughter does my hair, and I'm like, oh, you've got dye everywhere. I've done a really good job, actually. I have to say, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So that saves her a bunch of money, but. You you can't get your hairdresser around at any time now so you know i know they're gonna make us into heathens because you can have, no one's been able to have their hair cut <laughs> <laughs> oh no she wasn't happy because uh you know as i say the roots had grown so grow so long and uh i kept saying to her you need to get these done you need to get these done eventually like you're gonna have to do it now you're gonna have to do it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i'll have a go yeah i did a good job well done well done there so so what What's your what do you think is going to happen then to us coming out of this then, Renty? Oh, this is, this is the start. This is, I mean, anybody that thinks that we're coming out of anything. Because I think this just, is a prelude for something else. Yeah, well, we're not we're not coming out of anything. This is literally the start. This is the start of probably a, a multi-year plan that they've got ready to go. So they're going to do things like. Uh, the thing is, Renty, even though they've tried to sort of suppress all the the, the truth. A lot of people know there's something wrong. Yeah, I think people are waking up to that too, you know. I think they are waking up to it slowly and whether they'll be able to implement it. I mean, I think if they tried to implement this maybe 20 years ago or 18 years ago after 9-11 or something like that before it became too well known about what happened with 9-11, I think if they'd have done it back then, what they're trying to do now, then they might have got away you know with it. I find really incredible. It was happened. It happened nine eleven time, and it was passed by Obama about two thousand and fourteen. That the media can lie to us. So yeah. you know, when you watch it, I used yeah. to watch it, and I, I, I was so horrified with the Gulf Wars. But yeah. now I think all oh, that was made for me. Yeah, yeah, it's legal or whatever. It's allowed for them to lie to you if it's in the public interest, and it's like that's just. The news is supposed to be the news. You shouldn't have fake news, you know. Just be honest. Yeah, I found someone, right? Um, oh, I can't think of her name right now. And I started watching her for years. I kept her in the back of my mind that I'd seen her talking and standing up and supposedly trying to take on CNN. But now, with this open mind and the fact that I know a lot more, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, what the hell is she saying? She's saying, don't do this. But then she turns around and says, yeah, but the rest were a load of rubbish. So, yeah, go for them. And what it realised was she was another actress. She was another one put in there. She's just well, another actress, just another one playing her little part. Well, going back to your original question, which was where do I think this is going? Um, I think ultimately this is going to end up in a world war. I'll be honest. Yeah, I felt that, or the fact that the history books will say that, that they'll change it. You know, we were queuing for toilet paper they'll say we're queuing for food so they're lying but they're not lying well, there will, they there will say, be a food well, shortage for a home. No, there, will you know, a, there will be a food, food shortage for sure there will be a food shortage it's it's inevitable there's no way of not having that food shortage it will come because there's nobody been out to to pick the crops all the crops are dying in the so, if most people realize that yeah they're different countries but these countries all have harp there's all these things going on they're all connected they all work together you know, I've looked at footage and it's supposed to have been Putin and, and Trump. Well, you can see through them and they're glitching. None of these, they, they've made it all. These people weren't standing together, but they're all in it together. Well, it's going to be, ultimately, it's, they're going to they're starve us. 
jobs are going to weaken our resolve. People will be out of jobs. The, the, the recession will bite really hard. A lot of people will really, really struggle and will want someone to blame. And you can already see that the blame is being laid firmly at China's doorstep. And it's not just here in the UK or in America, but it's all over. Everybody wants a piece of China right now. And, you know, you go after China, and you yeah, go after weird. Russia I, as well. I saw a post, it said basically China have sort of survived everything. Their economy didn't really get affected. They're starting to make all the goods again. And you're like, wow. And But again, you just don't know how much they're going to push now to make it all look like it's China. But you know what? There are many companies not taking in China. They're taking America to court. Unless that was a load of rubbish. You know, I saw that post. It was America that was being taken to court. Probably. But you've got to look at the, what China's doing with its Navy and everything and how they're expanding, how quickly they're, they're building their aircrafts, etc. I mean, they're, they're getting they're ready. One of, they're just one of the game. They're part of the game. Well, you say it's a game, but there's going to be real people dying. I mean, Agenda 21. Yeah, but we, we're, agenda. we're, what do you call it? We're clever. At all. It doesn't matter about us. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But what I'm saying is Agenda 21 is an agenda and they will make sure that it comes to fruition. I mean, they want the population to be, what, under 500 million? So, so we don't hate Russia now. We hate China instead. Well, Russia's been taken off the table for the time being, but they're just another communist country, aren't they? And they're associated and have alliances with Russia. So, in effect... And they, you know how we've been hearing it. all those years about them telling us how bad it is and how they treat the Russians? When you actually look at what they've done to us and the lie that we're in right now, they've done the same to us. They just did it slightly differently, that's all. Yeah, well, look at what they, look at what China do. I mean, they look at all the people who've got in concentration camps over there. Look at the harvesting of uh, human organs that they do, of the prisoners over there. And they sell them on the market. Do you think I mean, all of that is real, or do you think that's propaganda again? Oh, no, that's, no, that's, that's real. There's, I think there's three million people they have in concentration camps, and they're Muslims over there that are in these in these concentration camps. And then they're also, I think they call them the Uyghurs or something. Um, and then you've got the, the forced... Mind uh, you, we have something just as bad in the West or America. It's called FEMA. You know, each country has its thing. There's a lot of bad that goes on that they don't want the people... They, they, you know, I mean, if you'd have asked me a year ago, did I know that they had... Uh, prisoners in concentration camps in in china for just just for being muslim i would have said don't be silly <laughs> you know i wouldn't have believed it i wouldn't have believed that they were actually going to cut people open and take their organs out and sell them to other people you know richer people for money i didn't think that was a trade over there but it is you know and we're just too fixated on one thing after another to realize all the abuses that are happening worldwide and you've got to understand that there's also these uprisings that are happening all over there everybody seems to be waking up in their own individual country and rebelling and the best way to control that yeah and the is thing is they're not reporting it correctly war. are they yeah. they're just making fake news for us that's the sad bit yeah, you know, like I'm saying, in America, they think we run everything. They do. That's all they tell me. But, you know, I have to say, no, 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 no. You run everything. <laughs> you know, because well, that's the way it's portrayed here. Well, well, yeah, we are closely linked. I mean, you can't deny that, you know, America and, and Britain are very, very closely tied. I mean, just something happening, did... though, because I was out in London and even though there's a lockdown, they were still laying loads of cables. Right. And I heard Boris talk the other day and it's about the fact that we have a very we're a very tech country now and a lot of its computers but i also know that they're trying to make a heart and you know a, 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 an internet heart we're supposed to be all linked up to it so you know is that's what's happening in london then it's going to happen all over the world you know i mean it's not just going to happen here in the uk i mean they want us all linked they want us all on this matrix like i was trying to explain before they, they're trying to create the matrix the film the matrix just gave us an idea you know plugging us well, it's all the of them isn't it it's total it's... recall space yep. odyssey the truman family you've got that film when you put them all together we're living in all of that put together and also they had this um one particular episode on black mirror and i think it was called uh, nosedive yes it was it was called nosedive and what it was it was this woman who wanted to better herself she wanted to have a better house or a better credit score or something like that now they had this app on her phone and she's rated it's linked to her phone and she has a profile and the people the individuals every single person in the world also has a phone 
And if you do a good deed for somebody, they give you a five star, they mark you up. If you do something average, they'll give you a, a medium score. And everybody's basically um, sort of profiling you, profiling you and giving you a, a score for everything you do, even just walking down the street, how you walk or anything like this. So it was a very weird thing. She had like a 4.5 or something rating out of five, which was almost good enough to get this place that she wanted. And then she had this really bad day and one thing went from bad to worse to worse to worse to worse and she did everything wrong and everybody profiled her and her score dropped to around about one and she literally lost everything. So it was all to do with what buses you could get on, what um, house you could get, what, what restaurants you could eat in, all down to this social profiling. Now, wow. if you watch what happens in China, they have this credit, they have this score over there and it's basically a very similar thing, but it's the government that marked you on your on your social score, what buses you can get on, what trains you can get on, what planes you can fly on. So it is already happening in China. But I always thought to myself, well, how would they implement that here in the UK or anywhere, this, this profiling where one person profiles another? Well, look at what happened in the coronavirus uh, at its peak when people were um, out and about, let's say. People were making comments about them being out and about. My missus put a post out because we went for a walk and you're only allowed out for an hour each day, apparently. So we went out and we, she just happened to put on the post, we've been out for two hours and we put all these beautiful images up about walking around the park, right? The only comments from the people in the chat and the Facebook post were, you were out for two hours, shame on you. You should have only been out for an hour. And it was comment after comment of people slagging us yeah, off that, being out do you know something i have to tell you now, that was I... social profiling right now if they could have scored us if they could have scored us as a human you know if we were on that that same app right and we and they could have profiled us they would have all scored us like a zero yeah you know? can and i tell they... you something else renty it's by accident because you know a lot of where i am is because it came into my my own you my own inbox on youtube but um they oh my goodness i just suddenly thought about something else it's got what were you talking about i'm sorry uh, I... we're talking about the social profiling about the uh... oh yeah yeah go on <laughs> this is what they've done they've made people believe something's not true and i i noticed that's it oh gosh i've got it now um this nasa thing came in and what it was is it was about NASA keeping their promise. And I didn't notice it to start with. It was actually when I got to the end of the video and it, it was talking about how NASA want to take over the Earth. They want to do local government. They want to do flights. They want to do local government. And the list goes on. And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you haven't even been to the moon. You want to take over here. But then suddenly these words came up and they're into cognitive engineering. You should right. look that one up cognitive engineering and then i thought about it and they were going nasa keeping their promise and my video said um well maybe they're not breaking their promise because it depends what they promised and who they promised it to you know just because we see these words up doesn't mean they're for us yeah they're just yeah everything's in code cognitive yeah. engineering which is all about controlling people yeah well they're doing that's it already, nasa nasa we we, um, you know, as humans, you wouldn't think that you would automatically grass your neighbour up or anything like that. But this is essentially what they've got the people to do. You know, you, you actually, if you don't go out and you clap at eight o'clock on a Thursday and you stand at your front door and bang the drums and clap Oh, my hands, goodness, yeah, I've opened eight. the window and said, it's all, all fake. What are you doing? It's fake. Yeah, but 90% of the street are out clapping like lunatics and banging the drums, right? And those people that don't go out, Hello. Oh, we've just lost Ranty. I'll just get him back. Very interesting, isn't it? There we were in full force about that very subject and Ranty has disappeared. I'm waiting for him to come back. Hey, we've got Ranty back. We had to start a new hangout. Thanks, Google. <laughs> they cut me off. They literally cut me off midstream can you believe it it's worse <laughs> it just said the video call has ended it literally just stops me in my i track, was so. still on there i don't get that but they obviously wanted to cut the the conversation but you were saying i was saying to... i was saying yeah uh, what was i saying <laughs> uh, you were talking more about 
how, how people were being monitored and what it did to their lives actually yeah. and i was trying to say yeah and, and you were also bringing up that in in the, in this thing we're in now that they is that person had gone out for, you've gone out for two hours and people were putting the yeah. terrible comments well it's just what I, you know i mean if you th if you look at it this way i always thought how would you get your neighbor to behave that way how would you get your neighbor to uh to you know to stand at the front door and clap you know i know how they do it because Yesterday, my neighbours were out on the street, right? And it was VE day, and he's been a soldier, and he's very, you know, into the British Legion and the whole thing. And I, I went to the window and I said, Colin. And he looked at me with distaste. Well, I'm all right out here. And I was going, no, it's good. I'm really happy you're out there. And I'm not really the subject, but I'm just glad that, you know, people were outside sitting together, yeah. you know? Well, the thing it was, wasn't... you, you, you yeah. get you get profiled if you don't go to your door if you don't go to your door and clap you're you're now the odd one out you're now the one that's not clapping for the nhs you're the one that's got an issue with the nhs you are now a troublemaker your house is now looked upon and looked down upon because you're not standing with the rest of them and clapping at the front door you know so they are profiling you for sure you know i mean it's it really you know is. I mean, it only lasts a few minutes but it, i hate it it does but like i say they profile you for that and the repercussions of that going forward I've filmed when all of this it. finished I've filmed it a couple of times it, what it is is say people aren't aware of it then they hear the clapping and then they all start coming out and then the clap goes on even longer because everybody else is starting yep. to clap and then they start banging their pans and i'm like oh don't you realize just go to a hospital there's no one there <laughs> i think it's not that they're clapping right because our national health does need a clap yeah, yeah especially the nurses which a lot has been put on them You're but right. it's why they're clapping they, yeah, they believe they're clapping because the, the the national health is saving everybody right now from this pandemic. But it's forced. Um, it's forced. It's forced clapping, and you're clapping because you have been told to stay indoors. You are clapping the the government because you've been put in lockdown. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so insane. It's like you know, you're clapping for this, and it's like I've, I've broken down, Boris. I, I'm just so horrified at this piece of footage. So outside Ten Downing Street is a width of two cars, right? And a lot of them go they go into the road just outside the door of Ten Downing Street and then make their speeches. But what it was is he got in the momentous eighty seat majority. So you know, he's 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 talking there. And um, what it is, is there's a news reporter standing next to the camera. And when you look at Boris, he's the size of a Monopoly piece on a game board. He's tiny. He looks like he's in a field. There's only two car widths. You know, if I walk two car widths a day, I suddenly don't disappear down to the size of a, uh, a baby. <laughs> you know, like, and, and you know, the, the, also the background was moving very weirdly because the whole thing was a set or a, or a, or a computer thing. And, um, you know, that to me, we're being run by some computer games. Yeah. These people made these programs months ago. You know what I mean? They, they, this whole thing they're in, they're months ahead of us. But I am quite shocked that the community itself, you know, like if we've been talking about it, we get here and a lot of people don't know what to do don't know what to say everybody's like what the hell's happening well i think you've just got to base it on what we already knew you know we knew that they had these agendas in place we knew that they were trying to implement this one world currency we knew they were trying to do the forced vaccinations one world and order. to be honest yeah the one world order and all of this you know they can bring about all of this on the back of this and they'll see how compliant each country is uh, and where the troublemakers are by who steps out of line who talks out of line you know this has just been a massive hey, do you know as massive... well you know the person that set up this whole thing where we're supposed to be um quarantined in our own homes he broke the laws they had to sack him the yeah person that's... Made the law. <laughs> and the one in scotland uh the lady in scotland that was the chief medical officer up there <laughs> she did it two weeks running she she went and stayed in a in her lodge out of outside of edinburgh somewhere you know took like an hour's drive away and then she's like oh i am sorry yeah one rule for one and one rule for another you know but yeah she, they they got yeah, rid of her as well calls going on to be honest somehow well, they, but the elites they're you know getting what? out aren't they they're bugging out the bugging out the elites are bugging out all the ceos have left all the the places yeah you know the... what though that 
but what it is is they're going to tell us the baddies have gone but the baddies will still be there oh of course they are the same listen i think they've gone i think personally they've gone to the places we can't go you know 60 degrees south latitude or whatever and i think that's where they've gone they've gone to the outer regions you know beyond where we're allowed to go you know beyond antarctica well, the else I found out as well, Ranty, you know, it's by accident. I was watching about Queen Elizabeth the uh, first because it's very interesting because in our history, but we know it's all a load of rubbish. Uh, Edward the fourth comes behind Henry the seventh. Then it's Henry the eighth. Then it's Elizabeth the first. But Henry the fourth was. What do you call it? I hate using that word, but um, he was born. His mother, he was not the king's son. So right. he was illegitimate. He never should have come to the throne, and the real king lives in Australia right now. How the hell? Anyway, I was looking at it, and it came up with Elizabeth I with these Tartaria maps. And on it, you can see it's the four rivers, but they show Greenland is only the size of the UK. So what they've done is they've included the four rivers and Greenland, because we never go to the four rivers, because it'll be ice and snow and everything. So whatever we see is the people who live on this island below it, but they've now included that all. So the North Pole is in, in what we call Greenland. Quite possible. You put the four rivers and Greenland together, it's exactly the same shape as what they're showing as Greenland is today. And they've got Greenland as um, the size of America and uh, Canada together. And on a news thing, this news, because Trump wants to buy Greenland, um, or is interested in buying it. Um, they said it's seven times the size of the UK, but on the Tartaria maps, it's about the same size as the UK, the real Greenland. Who knows? We haven't got the capabilities to go and check it out for ourselves, have we really? We can't go and check it out, but I do think instead of taking people down to Antarctica, they take them there. I mean, it's quite possible. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just don't know what sort of place we live on. Who knows? It could be hollow for all we know. And there could be another land beneath us for all we know. We just don't know. You know, I do when believe, though, that there's out outer regions. Region. So it does look like backwards and forwards goes only so far. But when it pans to the left and it pans to the right, you can go on for almost ever. Hmm. It's like we're yeah. living on a ruler, to be honest, when they show us from the high altitude balloons. But we don't have any proof. Well, there'll always be a convergence. That's always going to happen, you know, we, like, even if you were looking into infinity. Effect. We can't. And the other thing that really amazed me on, on my journey was that, um, you know, when those high altitude balloons are going up, when it's in the blue sky, everything's blue, but it goes above the blue sky. The camera looks down and there is no blue sky. You can just see everything reflecting. I, I, just, I, I was just like, there's no blue sky at all. There's no, when he looks down, there's no blue. It's just the land. So it, it, we just don't know what we're living on, where we are, the whole thing, really. Oh <laughs> uh, Well, all I would say to people right now, the main thing you've got to think about is look after yourself, prepare for the food shortages, because I truly believe that we are going to go into a, uh, a food shortage position. And I think uh, that food it's is... a forced one, isn't it? It's been made to yeah. happen. It wasn't and... really there, but it's been made to happen. But it has to happen now. There's no escaping that the, the, the there's too many dominoes been knocked down in that chain and that supply line. You know what? This, this not guy to Chuck, happen anymore. This guy, um, Tucker Carlson off the news, uh, Fox News. He was talking about this one lady in her in her county. Nothing's ever going back the way right. it was ever, you know, so how do you get people to church or sports or anything? How are they going to reopen things up if it's never going to change? Exactly. Well, make your own food. That's what I would say. Go out and get some potatoes, dig some potatoes in your garden if you've got space. If not, get some pots. You can you can live quite a while on a good, good old bit of potato, <laughs> you know um and some canned meats you know get some canned meats in you know sort of like prepare prepare yourself just in case that you uh you do end up in a situation where your food is running out or the cost of food has gone so high that the money monetary value is very small in you know in comparison to what you can actually afford to buy because i think that's what's coming and i think what will happen then is they'll do this reset this sort of like monetary reset um maybe a war who knows it it, it's a very uncertain time, but I do think that this is just That's the beginning. It, I don't think this is the the words, uncertain time, and they love that, and they're going to play on that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I see it too. I, I think. Well, I think they're certain about where they want this to go, but we're uncertain. But we've just got to prepare. You know, for it. Let's because just hope that people the wake up system. enough. Let's just yeah. hope that they're out there wake up enough and smell the rat. Because you know, what, I, I, you know, if I could have, um, obviously last year when when the election was on, if there was a little thing there that said. I want to vote, but I don't, I'm not voting for them. ARCA would have voted. But even if you put that, they would have manipulated it. Because they already did, because Boris got in on an 80-seat majority, but nothing that I saw on the internet showed he did. Nothing. And, he, and they made his, his victory day, they made that months ago. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, that all could be scripted, you know. It's all scripted. It's all part of the game. That's the, all I see is uh, everybody's Euro lying, everybody's deep faking. It's just disgusting. Well, the European... What do you make of Tartaria then, just asking? Well, before we get to that, I just wanted to say that the European um, sort of trial, so to, so to speak, about how, um, how they would see this as a future for a one world government sort of thing. This is like the, you know, sort of like the test run. Let's see how Europe works out. It didn't work out, you know. Yeah, we haven't done what we were supposed to do. Yeah, and I think they, they now know that. They know that they can't bring a one-world government in at this moment in the current status that it's in because they tried to implement it when, obviously, it was like 20 years after the World War, you know, and, you know, people were getting back on their feet. You had the swinging 60s. Everyone was enjoying life. They didn't want to go into a, you know, you know, there was, there was no they hardship there. to terrify you know? everybody with nuclear power instead. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think reality is good. Well, I say things have moved on. And I think that if they were to starve all the world and to make them really want to sort of come together and work together, I mean, that's what they're doing, basically. They're, they're, they're shutting things down so that yeah, they can that's create hard like, This is a bit I don't think people realise. Say it did happen. Say this whole thing had happened. They would have been totally different. You would have seen... And then making mistakes, they would have been flustered. There would have been all these things going on which we don't see. It's all scripted. Mm. And Tartaria, all scripted. though. Tartaria, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely been, if, if you've had, got an opportunity to get Martin Leapy on the show, you know, he'll tell you all about that. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we did. Our last hangout, though, for some reason, the recorder didn't record him. But when he was talking on, the, on another one, I had Santos Bonacci and I had Martin and it was like someone's running a marble round a glass. Only them. So every time they talked, this thing was swirling around. The first time with Santos, I thought, can't he hear it? But he couldn't. It was not his fault. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I love Martin. Martin's a really great guy. I love him. Martin yeah, so if, you, if you want to know anything about, you know, anything about Tartaria or anything like that, you know, he's the guy to go to. And uh, you don't only have to listen to a few of his streams to know that he's done a lot of research on this. He has the material, he has the, the album. I think what sources. he's made me realise when I've watched some of his things, especially about this uh, earthquake of San Francisco at the turn of, you know, like 19, whatever it was, 1908 or something, that that was just them demolishing a town so they could build their new one. And they were getting rid of all these Tartaria buildings to do it. You know, when he's when he looked at it, it was like, why is all that piping there? Why is, you know, like, you know, he said, this looks, this doesn't, this looks like it's, you know, it doesn't look like an earthquake. It looks like a war. Exactly. He's brilliant, Martin. So, right, should we, should we wrap up? I'm going to get my dinner. Yeah, we've been going for an hour. Um... Yeah. Really nice to chat with you, Auntie. Um, yeah. Thank you very I'll much chat for again, having always. a nice hangout. And yeah. uh, very practical advice you gave there. Yeah, you know, I mean, like I say, just prepare, prepare yourself. You know, if the worst doesn't, if the worst never happens, and you bought a few extra groceries in, long life groceries, you know, some rice and some uh, tin food, uh, tin meats and stuff. Uh, then what have they you? They did it what really, really well, spent? didn't they? Because self isolating means we don't go out, and so they, yeah. they, they. They did this really well, this planademic. They did it really well because we just surrendered overnight. Well, if you're not if you're not interacting and contact with other people, you're not actually sharing. Yeah, they the, want you looking at the tele television. They want you looking. Well, no, not just that. I mean, 
for a, from a, a perspective of how our bodies work, we need to have contact. Yeah, locking with other us germs down makes it work. A resistance. Yeah, we have a resistance to it. And if you're if you're told not to interact with other people, bump into them, or hang out hang out down the pub with them, you know, you're not going to get that little. I know they've taken. You know, I don't know if you're into it, but they've taken sports away. A lot of men love, love sports, whatever it is, golf, football, whichever, all, all of them. Yeah. So taking and then the that away, take, yeah. Things that go along with it. The mental health of being locked in, the you know, not being able to socialise with yeah. your friends, not being able to go and see your family, being attacked you know, when you go out. Yeah. Well, that's more to more to the the loneliness side of thing, you know, the mental. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of fallout from this. It wasn't sure. great in a way. I mean, it's taught me a few things. Like we're a bunch of hypochondriacs. That's one thing. Yep. Um, maybe you don't agree with this one, but you know, I was quite ill a few years ago, and it was a one one doctor. So that's on a telephone number that actually sorted my life out quite quickly, and it would have taken days to do it for the doctor. And that one one doctor could see the blood test that I'd had that day. Now, one of the things might be that they we don't have surgeries anymore, and that the doctors are calling you. I, th I actually think that's a much better solution because that one one doctor told me I was seriously ill and I needed to go to hospital straight away. But if I'd gone the national health way, you know, like that way to the doctors, it would have taken me a few more days. I might have died. So. Yeah. I actually think that that's a good thing. And so there are a few good things out of this, but the majority of it, like 98% of it, it's just awful. Definitely. Do this to the people. They all need to go to prison, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> right, well, as I say, thanks for having me, and I'll come back. Should yeah, and thank you very much email? for all your research in that. When you're talking, you sound like a scientist. I know we don't, you know, in there, yeah. but you sound like a scientist. <laughs> I feel like I've somewhat become a bit of a scientist on just one particular topic. You know, there's there's a lot of things I don't know about, and I, I'll just openly hand my hold hold my hands up and say I don't really know anything about that. But if you want to talk about optics or anything like that, then yeah, I'll have, I'll have a debate with you. Great. Well, there you go then. Ranty's words, Ranty. We'll say goodbye when I've pressed the button, but for this hangout, obviously, thank you very much, Renty. And thank you very much, chat room. Bye-bye, everyone. See you later.